In these videos, I will take a look at some of the comments that you, the viewer, have shared with me. Some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel. Some of them may not be, depending upon their content. I use this as an opportunity to answer questions, address criticisms, and acknowledge criticisms, of course, and direct the conversation, keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended, meaning it is a grammar channel. This is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. And so that's the main purpose of this channel. So if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel, I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field. This is definitely a learning place, a place for learning where I teach not only the grammar but also the psychology of the grammar. One other thing, I don't ever take anything personal. It's never personal. Although it may seem like it is at times, it's not, it's not at all. And I highly recommend everyone out there commenting, follow the same protocol. Don't take anything personal that I say. What you put in is what you get out. The energy that you bring here, I will most likely either give back to you, maybe a little bit, or maybe a thousandfold. It just depends upon how you approach me. This is my vessel. There are terms and conditions. If you comply with them, everything's peachy. If you don't, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Without further ado, let's get to the comments. Our first comment comes from Adam. I'm not even going to say that last name because I don't wish to mispronounce it. And he says, so did this guy just complain about snowflakes who get their feelings hurt asking people to stop calling people Karens because it will hurt people's feelings? Well, the answer to that question, Adam, is no, uh, because this guy didn't say anything like that. This guy didn't complain about anything, and I certainly didn't ask anybody to do anything. I suggested people stop using that word to as an insult towards other people. Um... It was a recommendation. It's not asking. It's a suggestion. There's a huge difference. Uh, Adam, if you look up the word asking and then look up the word suggestion, it's two completely different things. Um, but in any case, the title of the video is in quotes, Karen. And if you look at the wording overlay, it says, for the power of the grammar, period. And what I'm saying is, is that the pen is mightier than the sword. Although I was brought up to think that sticks and stones may break my bones, but names or words will never hurt me. And I do have a pretty thick skin and I don't really take anything personally. There are those who don't follow those same rules. And words, facts, and truth can definitely, definitely be used as a weapon to hurt people. Um, and so the fact that you made this type of comment tells me exactly where you stand with regards to this types of, these types of things, which can definitely spill over into the bullying sector. <laughs> Next comment comes from someone named Necrofeast. You really, really need to shave those weird tufts of facial hair, my man. The Fedor only is pushing it. The Fedor only is pushing it. Just saying out of love, man, you look like if Wolverine had zero powers and slept with an anime body pillow. That's pretty good. If Necrofeast is saying that out of love, man... I shudder to think what he would say out of hate. Wow. But, you know, I'm not one to take uh, fashion or cosmetic advice from someone named Necrofeast, which means 
feasting on the dead. <laughs> Next comment comes from Dion Wasa, and they say, The whole subterfuge of the dark forces is by the multitude of teachings offered to the mind they diligently lead people away from the main thing. This is a translation from Russian in Vladimir Murgray's fourth book, Co-Creation, first published in 1999. Uh, so, I had a couple questions about this comment. Um, for example, what is meant by dark forces? And what exactly does it have to do with the video that Dion is commenting on? Because I really couldn't draw a connection there. So Dion uh, corresponded back, I was thinking of our space of love, or now space, as some call it. It's interesting that Dion thinks of the now space as our space of love. I guess that's Dion's perception of it, and our may be Dion's you know, specific biosphere group of people, um, but I certainly wouldn't guess that Dion is assuming that everyone thinks it's a space of love because then that would make, be making assumption presumption for other people who may not participate with that concept. What are we creating in this life if we are constantly scrutinizing the next person who shows up saying they have this or that special teaching? What are we creating in this life if we are constantly scrutinizing the next person who shows up saying they have this or that special teaching? I'm not sure what Dion's volition is behind this comment. At first, I got the sensation that they were perhaps critiquing me for doing a reaction video. But I don't think that's what they're doing. But one thing's for certain. Um, I don't think Dion has a grasp of correct sentence structure. Um, and definitely... If they did, then they would have more of a grasp on why I did the reaction video that they are commenting on with comments that I can't connect to the video itself. Uh, so that just tells me that they don't really have a grasp of correct sentence structure or probably even know what it is or what it does. And they're just commenting based on one video that they've seen and based upon some assumptions and presumptions. But that's a guess on my part. And then Dion goes on to say, my opinion of what dark forces in this context is, is any entity that has not the confidence to balance the two opposing forces within themselves and therefore are manipulated as some kind of servant to thwart the light of good. Good meaning what, dry, what derives, derives itself from the source dream, thought, and holds a self replicating thought in perpetuity to further the uniqueness of life on earth. Pardon the plain, silly English. Well, um, as I stated in my reply to my kuleana to Dion, that the uniqueness of life, I mean, good and bad are opinions, basically, and they both contribute to the uniqueness of life on earth and contract is by source um of course it's also a choice to be a servant if you choose to serve someone um but always remember that there is rule one rule equal and contract is by consent everybody has a choice whether they want to participate with this type of uh construct or that type of construct a good construct or a bad construct what's good for me might not be good for you what's good for you may not be good for me may be bad for me so you can see how this how this goes <laughs> thank you for the comment next comment comes from j.a richardson and they say, disclaimer, this was created by voice-to-text dictation on a very small screen, which makes it nearly impossibly, impossible to efficiently edit. Please use your discernment in translating these words into a message. 
Any phonetical errors are just that, errors made because they sound like the same word but was translated into the wrong word and I missed it. Please disregard any phonetical errors because we know the grammar is already corrupted. I am simply trying to communicate a message accurately. Do you have a spirit and is it a fact or is it a fiction because you can't measure it because we don't have the technology to measure your spirit? Um, J.A., as far as correct sentence structure goes, if you decide to study it, you will see that the angle that you're approaching it from that you have something is not really correct in line with correct sentence structure rule one rule equal principles. Let me allow me to flip it for you and tell you that I do participate with the concept of spirit as a fact. And that I yes, I may be a steward of my spirit, but do I have a spirit? Have implies possessorship, and I do not uh, participate with possessorship in a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, domain in that biosphere. So, um, measuring the spirit, do I have the technology to measure the spirit? Well, based upon my correct sentence structure, finite meaning of spirit, I think, yes, I do. Do you have a soul? Now, I don't participate with soul as a fact in my dictionary. I've never used it in a contract. As far as what I'm guessing that you mean by soul, um, I don't know. I mean, can you? Can you show me what a soul is the way that I could show you what a cup is? I can show you my correct sentence structure, finite mean of what spirit is, and I can prove it to you in this almost the same way that I can prove what a cup is or what love is or what air is. I can do it. Um, can you do the same with soul? You have to have criteria, as I said in those uh, videos that I've done recently about facts, that you have to have basically a list of certifications that you can tick off for each fact, and you cannot make exceptions for this fact over that fact. They all have to have the same criteria in order to be a fact in your contracts. If you have no tangible tools to measure your soul, does that mean you don't have one, and does that mean that it is a fiction? I would say that we don't have the technology, or at least it has not been made available to the public in order to certify is certify the energetic fact of the soul. Well, first you have to prove it. I mean, because what you're telling me here is that you're assuming that you have one, but you can't prove it because the technology doesn't exist. That's like saying aliens exist, but we don't have the technology to prove it because we don't have the spaceships to go see them. I don't, I don't know, you know, something like that. Uh, ghosts exist, but we don't have the technology to, to prove it. Uh, Cthulhu from HP Lovecraft, he exists, but we just don't have the technology to prove it. You know, Satan exists, but we just don't have the, you know, that's kind of a, that seems to be kind of a convenient way to participate with the belief, much just like, you know, religious people do it. Um, but again, you know, what is a fact for you? You can certify for yourself. That's fine. Um, but in order to contract using that word as a fact with others, you must be able to certify that as a fact to others with the continuance of the evidence. I recognize that everything is in creation, starts as a thought, is, is a thought something you can measure, but yet it exists in a place that is hidden. A thought is still a fact. And it can be certified because you have one and so do I. Well, you have a soul and so do I. Mm, see, now J.A. is getting into the assumption, presumption part of it because we can prove a continuance of the evidence as to what cogitation is, what thinking is. Can't do it with soul in the same way. At least I've never seen anyone do it. Maybe J.A. knows something that I don't about it or can prove it. But so far, they have given me no evidence that they can. They're basically saying there's no technology to measure that. Take the radio analogy for the soul. In a radio, if you bust that radio open to look for the music, you will not find the music inside of that radio because it is being broadcast into that radio in the same way you will not find your soul by tearing your body apart. Does that mean that you cannot certify that you have a soul? Well, first, you have to. 
to prove what a soul is. You have to give closure to what that is and be able to prove it. I can give you closure as to what music is. I can give you closure as to what radio waves are. I can show you exactly how or demonstrate to you or explain to you, give you closure on how those waves operate or navigate to go through a radio to come out the speakers of your stereo so that you hear it. Those are all easily explainable. Uh, this analogy you're using, well, it's clever. It still gives no closure to the soul. You're asking me to participate with which something that by my knowledge is an assumption. Asking me to participate with an assumption is a fact, um, which I don't do. In the radio analogy, our ego is the result of our environmental conditioning on the three-dimensional organ, the brain, and how that brain responds to the environment that is the tuner for the soul is the ego, depending upon how healthy it is, will be able to tune the soul and discover that that person, that individual's life purpose. By the way, J.A., ego, down in front of a consonant, means no go. So while I do use the word ego in some videos, the concept and word itself I don't really participate with in the factual domain of correct sentence structure. Is that being because the tuner has been conditioned by the environment in a healthy, productive way to efficiently tune in the broadcast of the soul? Well, I guess you'd first have to show me the broadcast of the soul. You have to prove that to me in a concrete, solid manner, and then I would be able to happily participate with soul as a fact. But until such time as you can prove to me uh, what soul is, in the same way that I can prove to you where music comes from, uh, how it travels radio waves into a radio, comes out your speakers, or, or simply put, this cup, and you know, until you can prove soul in that sort of way, give that level of closure, then soul, as far as I'm concerned, is assumption presumption. Next comment comes from L2. All right, already. You may have a difficult time cognizing this, but your teaching is sinking in. I apologize that my slow uptake has influenced you to spend yet more time setting me straight. I just received my Oxford English Etymology Dictionary in the mail. It sits at the ready on the shelf next to my second edition Black's Law, and Bouvier's is en route to me. Facts are much clearer now. That's interesting that L2 thinks that they're getting facts from adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, books such as Black Law, Oxford, English etymology, and so on and so forth. That's very interesting. Uh, I highly recommend watching the Parse playlist, especially the introduction to it, so that L2 can actually get closure on how facts are created. Incorrect sentence structure. The original nativity of a demon is where to start, not according to my or your belief. Now, there is no belief in correct sentence structure. L2, whoever you may be. Maybe L2, <laughs> when their mother was in the hospital, L2 popped out and their mother said, we're going to name him L2. I only say that uh, because I have offered this individual multiple opportunities to share their correct name and step up on the geometric level playing field, which uh, they have completely ignored and declined to. So that automatically throws any credibility that whoever this is has out the window, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not trying to take your digs at my ignorance personal. Thank you for your time and knowledge and experience. Have a nice day. Uh, I only return the energy that you bring. And I'm returning the energy, for example, that you're bringing in this comment. Uh, I don't know how the facts can be much clearer to you if you don't have closure on what correct sentence structure is. You won't even share your correct name. You won't even step up onto the geometric level playing field. And then they go on to say, and I really like the concept of creating a dictionary for each and every document. Dot, 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 ludicrous. And again, study the videos more intently. 
uh, multiple times because if you did then you would know that while each document in correct sentence structure would have its own dictionary it's all taken from one dictionary you only need one dictionary with one word one meaning and that works across all the contracts and then they go on to say and I may be slow but I doubt what you said about my inability to progress in a span of a year again let's see where you are in the span of a year let's come back here because so far I have heard I have seen no example of your correct sentence structure knowledge number one and number two you have not even shared your correct name after having been given many multiple opportunities I'm not sure why you want to hide if you're embarrassed or maybe you know what you're saying is uh, a little bit off kilter I don't know these are just guesses on my part uh, why someone would not want to credential themselves and step up onto the geometric level playing field and really put themselves forward to learn this grammar that's how I know who's serious and who's not serious Oh, and then they commented on the Quantum Grammar Shoot 107 uh, fact credentialing. They said, it's beating a dead horse now, don't you think? And then I had to put on this comment as sort of, uh, you know, again, giving back Kuliana, giving the, the energy that they're giving me, I'm giving back to them. Um, because obviously, from the way they're talking, they, by my perception, do not have closure on what a fact is specifically based upon their comment talking about fiction babble dictionaries. They haven't given me any indication that they know how to take that those pieces of knowledge to formulate a correct sentence structure finite mean. They haven't shown that at all. Um, but again, they may be new, so hopefully they will stick around and study and learn more and then realize exactly how facts are created in correct sentence structure using fiction sources to credential things as pieces of continuance of the evidence and but on top of that they also have to learn the positional sequencing and all the grammatical rules and things like that so yeah it's a long journey well that was an interesting comments video this week i uh, hope you liked it i think in the next one if there is a next one um I'm going to take a completely different approach because the Karen video that I shared, the little short one minute video, seems to have brought a lot of negativity to the channel. It seems that a lot of people don't want to let go of their name calling. And I will say this, when you call someone a Karen, that's like the, the lowest form of logical fallacy there is, the ad hominem when you call someone names it's name calling it's like elementary school stuff um it really is if you think about it i mean you, you can have your choice to do that type of thing to call people names but really has it ever really helped the situation to do that take for example the the things that i said in this video the way that i answered some of the comments like the l2 individual i know that that individual i can just tell by their comments and stuff like that that they're kind of on the fence and probably not even on the fence anymore they probably have unsubscribed to this channel already i don't know if they have or they haven't but i'm kind of guessing they're leaning towards that because of the manner in which i responded back to what they were saying they did not take my initial critique of their participation with demon as a fact they did not take it very well they took it very personal when what i was trying to convey was you have to certify your facts and for whatever reason the neurological pathways just weren't there they chose to take it personal and then continued down that road and then of course the other uh, comments from the Adam individual and then that necro feast individual. I mean, it's just sort of, sort of some negativity. And you know, maybe I should just try to not do those types of videos anymore. I tried that type of demeanor for a while. And 
try a more positive uh, sort of video. We'll see what happens. Who knows what the new year brings. If I don't see you in the new year, I hope everybody has happy holidays. You can always reach me at the email address below. Just know that. Uh, failing that, these 500 or so-ish videos on this channel hopefully will always be here for you if you'd like to study them. Uh, the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge, my gift in perpetuity to my fellow mankind. Thank you very much and happy holidays.